okay. Uh, so what we did is we add uh, we added a tool um, to the CI for the handbook, and whenever a change is made to a job family, we're gonna run it. And that tool checks a few things. I uh, let me quickly share my screen, but I'll first make sure everything. And I'll open a job family as well. I'll take mine. Uh, job family people engineer. Where are you? Oh yeah, I I'm using Google like it knows I work for GitLab. <laughs> I did okay. So let me share my screen. Okay, so kind of there's a, a user interface tool uh, that you can use, and that all these checks that happen also happen um, whenever you um, make a change. Uh, so I'm just copy pasting all the text from uh, this uh, from the job family for people operations engineer uh, to this tool. And if we analyze it, it's going to do a few things. It's going to check uh, gender coded language, which um, I didn't come up with these words. So it's kind of it puts words into uh, categories, masculine coded words or feminine coded words. Uh, just to make sure like something like strong is a masculine coded word that doesn't mean that you know women can be strong or active yeah. but just that research and um there is this study linked um just notice that whenever these words are in job ads that women are less inclined to apply so that's that's the distinction that's important to make it's not saying anything about women or men or you know but just like research has shown that if you put these words in text then women uh, are less inclined to apply. Okay. Uh, so kind of what the text, what this, um, the first check does is, it compares how many masculine coded words you used against feminine coded words, and then uh, make a, a distinction, like are you using, if you're, like in this case, there's a lot of feminine coded words, so this text is more strongly feminine coded. Uh, the, a nice thing about res that research is also that the effect that masculine coded wording has on women is, almost um, neglectable uh, on men. So for men reading this, they will still be inclined to apply. So uh, you would want it to be neutral or feminine coded, but I mean, you can kind of see, of course, for some, like I think for some roles, and I think especially like roles with finances, like you will have a lot of analysts and you know, all these words in there. So sometimes you will have, the text will maybe still stay like masculine coded, but you can at least kind of look, okay, maybe there are some words that I can swap out. Uh, so then another thing it, that it does is it checks for pronoun usage. So now all our job families don't have he, she anymore because I just got rid of all of them. Uh, but so if you would, uh, and I think this, mostly we, we make our job families neutral, uh, but I just noticed it was like, if you want to look up a person, go to uh, his, her, uh, role in the team page and I just made that there. So I think usually on pronoun usage we're doing well. It also checks for misused words, um, which is kind of like using a word like spirit animal. Um, so you, often people use that like, oh, this is my spirit animal, which like probably not, you know, kind of, and it's, um, if you use any of these words, it will um, give you, uh, so like if I would uh, type in misuse, uh, something like spirit animal and I, I would run it again then in the misuse words it will tell you you're using it replace it with you know something else so that it gives you that as well i think our job families will not really hit this but you know it's possible we're, we're checking it anyway and then specifically for um, job ads it also checks um mindset so growth coded words fixed versus fixed coded uh, as it says, uh, recruiting content that uses growth mindset lang language can lead to faster hiring times uh, and more hirings being made from underrepresented group. It's again just out of research shown that, okay, if you use these words, some people are more inclined or less inclined to um, yeah, apply. So in this case, the job family is strongly fixed coded, which probably means that, oh, we might want to change some words uh, and it gives you the words that are in there. Um, that you might want to move out or, you know, use other words. Again, this does the same. If 
you can you can still find a nice balance this doesn't mean you need to get all the words out it just means like hey you're using way more of one type than of another so again uh, you know, don't, this doesn't mean like you need to get all of these words out and replace, but just kind of find a nice balance so it becomes more neutral. It doesn't need to go to a strongly growth coded as well, just kind of let's swap them out. So that's the checks we do. Um, of course, we know it can't be all changed at once. Uh, so there's a lot of job families that currently fail, and maybe that's just because certain words need to be used, you know, we, 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 that's what it is. Uh, so it doesn't mean that you cannot um, have this job family go live or, you know, be changed. What we did is in the handbook, um, we added a file, uh, inclusivenesscheck.yaml. Oh, there's, okay, it's gonna come. Um, and now all the files that are here listed on the skipped, uh, those are files that currently fail um, this linter, just this check, um, which is, you know, again, this is not making a statement of, you know, where we are like our, our job families are bad. It's just the checks that I just explained are kind of saying, hey, they're failing. And failing means um, that, the, what we look at for specifically for GitLab job families is the gender coded language gives a masculine uh, trend is what we call it. Uh, so this text is marked as masculine or strongly masculine. Uh, there's pronoun usage will also make it fail. If there's any misused words, it will fail. And for growth, uh, if you have fixed growth or strongly fixed. Uh, and I sh uh, after this call, uh, I will also make sure this is clear from the handbook, in the handbook as well, so people can um, kind of go back to it. I made a short description. I will have to check if, if I explain specifically why it can fill. The pipeline in, you know, how you have, you commit and then you have the pipelines, it will say why it failed so you could go. Uh, the thing is, because so many failed, we, we still wanted people to be able to make changes to the handbook and, you know, changes to the job family. So that's why we added this skip list. Um, so I don't know if you would be specifically for sales, you might want to check, is it currently being skipped? Because that could be the case that uh, we're not checking it. So for sales, there's uh, a few that are in there. So if you would make changes, that means we're not checking it because it was already failing, so we're not checking. So what you could do, if you start, you know, if you let, let's say uh, you want to change the job family for uh, professional services engagement manager, what I would recommend is that first you remove this line from this YAML file, and then you make your changes, and then um, the CI will run, and maybe it will still fail, and then you can add it again, but you can at least kind of see, hey. Uh, am I making it worse or, or is it getting better? Uh, and uh, the neat thing is that you can use this, this tool as well while you're doing it. You can kind of copy what I would suggest if when you start with an existing job family, you paste it in there and see, hey, what's the result? Um, is, is this, yeah, you know, what do I need to work on to improve? Of course, uh, this is only a few things that it does. There's still probably, you know, like don't take this as the holy grail and, and this tool is your final answer. It's just a guidance uh, and it makes recommendations. And that's kind of what, what we wanted to do. Just kind of make sure that, you know, we're improving our job families. I don't know if you have questions, feel free to ask. Yeah. So, um, for example, when you um, had the gender decoding, for example, and it gives you the list of masculine and yeah. feminine, I saw where it has like the number of times it must yeah. recognize that word. Um, does it uh, capture where that word is, almost like a find feature? Yeah, currently it doesn't do that. Uh, so in all openness also, so I, I created this tool. Uh, it's kind of a bit outside of my hours that I worked on this because I just thought it was interesting. Uh, it doesn't do that. Uh, of course, you can always go into your job family and do a, a find, but you, that's a, a, a manual work. Uh, it's one of the features that will be nice to have, like that it shows you where, but currently, no, it doesn't do that yet. The, the, yeah, you see, it's just a text field. There's nothing fancy about it. Um, yeah, so no, it doesn't no, do great. that. Yet. Yeah. No, and, the, and you make a great point that you can take that word. You understand that it's, you know, in there one time, so you can go yeah. do a find, Indeed. find it, and then you can also look up um, 
I guess yeah. an alternative word because I guess that would be the other key thing is understanding like okay if active yeah is a um, masculine word what's a word that is more inclusive yeah I I, I haven't so for misused words I have a, a the I can show you how it is set up uh, yeah. go to the right thing uh, so the data so for misused words there's always the the word the reason and then replace with uh, I don't have that yet for um, the gender associated words. Uh, but first of all, I'm not a native English speaker, so uh, I would kind of have to also, and also like active, you know, it could be depending on in which you, the context, like what, what would you want to replace it with? So that's still a little big, but it's a good suggestion that we do offer uh, you know, like replace with, you know, like kind of we could just do a synonyms checkup and make sure that what we suggest isn't also in the masculine code at the work list. Uh, but yeah, that's a good idea. I will, I will take that with me. Uh, to, but currently, you would still have to come up with it yourself. Um, I noticed there was just a um, uh, a change where, uh, for example, strong was replaced with great confidently with consistently objective with vision so kind of um it's small changes uh so i think probably i don't know you would have to ask clement uh, if he did a you know synonym lookup or if he came up with the things himself but i think the first one might feel a little weird because but i think we often reuse the same text so probably once you fix it for a few you'll be like i, I can use this um yeah, I agree. And especially with sales, I'm sure a lot of the term, uh, what we're trying to address is similar. So yeah. And note that maybe, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to, to take a sales shop uh, live and, you know, try it. It could be that um, some of them are just using words that are coded as masculine, uh, but maybe, you know, in the context of this is a sales role, we need it, you know, um, I'll, I'll just take one just to see. And you can ask your next question in the meantime. Yeah, so my other question was, um, since to your point that you said the feminine coded words, um, males would still apply. So is that fair to say that we're really just trying to address the masculine coded words and it's okay if there's feminine coded words? Or are we yeah. trying so to come up course, with a neutral? Yeah. So of course, I don't want to be setting up all the guidelines here. Um, I just kind of, and I also only based by uh, kind of my decisions on the research that I've gotten, if there's other research that people can feel free to, to give that to me, I would definitely say um, you want to get it that it's no longer, I mean, let's say, I don't want to make a final statements. I would say that you want to avoid the masculine coded words as much as possible uh so and hopefully that means that your text is marked as neutral maybe it switches over to feminine coded uh but how how the lint how the check on the ci is set up is that it will error out on masculine coded and not on feminine coded just because of what the research said is that it will have a such a slight uh, a slight uh, a minimal effect on men towards the opposite like when women perceive the masculine coded towards they will probably not apply so kind of enough yeah kind of that's the thing uh so yeah um but yeah this first job family i took is uh, and ends up as being feminine coded so good job <laughs> yeah. and of course you could still see it and maybe say okay but we do want to get competitive out although i'm sure that that's just you know talking about maybe our competitors or whatever so sometimes you will have things in there uh, this is, again, this is not like you follow this tool or it's bad. It's just a guidance. And I'm very open to uh, contributions. Uh, so if, if when you're working on things and notice things, please let me know. Um, I'd happily change things out. And for this example where um, it's feminine coded, so yeah. would you, um, as a best practice, then that's like, okay, this is good we're good or should we even though uh, it's showing feminine coded we should still look at those masculine coded words and see if there's an opportunity if it makes yeah. sense to address those do you think that's a fair statement? 
I think then maybe uh, a good thing the next thing I would maybe first be like okay whatever that's good then go to the growth versus fix and it is marked as strongly fixed so maybe while working on this you will rework sentences that anyway will get out some words uh, so that could be a first thing because uh, currently for on the gender coded language test this like it's fine it it passes you know uh, but you could still yeah if you see yeah we use the word i don't know driven two times and we know that that word is perceived uh by women um differently if they want to apply or not then maybe we could get it out um yeah that's that's an option but you could also think like okay at least this text is marked fine the real problem with this text is with the growth versus fixed and then you could first work on that and as you the word strong is in the fixed coded as well so you would immediately get you know it's in the masculine coded and in the fixed so if you remove the word strong it kind of is removed from from both anyway so uh you would hit to i don't know how you say that uh, yeah you would just do both at once perfect yeah no that makes sense okay so um where would I get access to your tool? Like, are you okay oh. with me taking it and using it for yeah, yeah. Our this audit? Is, and this is public. Uh, the the source code is public. Um, so then, uh, yeah, everything is public about it. So yeah, definitely. Okay. And then they get that YAML link too. Uh, I think that you had or yeah, that's so this I one. Can that, go through and delete yeah. them if we. Okay. Yeah, and let me quickly check in the handbook uh because it's somewhere uh in the uh yeah wait i know i think i can i know the link no hiring job families there's some stuff here and then once the merge request is submitted it says something about yeah it says the tool it says the list so maybe i can send you this link because then you have both the the yaml file is is linked and the tool is linked, so then you have both at once. Is that, does that work for you? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, and yeah, if you start working on things and you notice anything, feel free to reach out. Uh, and I, I, yeah, this this tool has only been in existence for a little while, so it can probably improve. And I, I no, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Especially you mentioned you put in some extra time to do this. So I mean, I know I greatly appreciate it. I think it's. A great tool that we can start looking into our job families and see where the opportunities are so all 100 percent utilize it um we're kind of in phase one with just going through job families to see yeah. what's missing and then this will probably be phase two yeah. and phase three um but i'll definitely reach out if we have mm -hmm. questions and thank yeah. you yeah and great. and that yeah that's fine I, and i just want to reiterate for you and whoever watches is that it's it's you know it's worthless it's based on whatever research i could find i'm not making any statements uh but and i'm happy to change things uh and it's not making any you know assumptions about anyone it's just this is what research has shown and that's kind of all and that's that's okay. what we're basing this tool upon and if we can improve or change happy to yeah no that's fair appreciate it you're you don't have any questions anymore um, nope. Uh, okay. um.